Hi there. Unemployment and inflation are two of the most important macroeconomic objectives for an economy. And the Phillips curve is a model that suggests there's a potential trade-off between improving the outcome for both prices and jobs. So we're going to explore these key ideas, these important ideas, in this revision video. So what is the Phillips curve? Well, the Phillips curve is a useful tool for A-level and IB economists, but it's important to remember that it is just a model. It's an economic model that uh, shows the possible inverse relationship between the rate of unemployment in the labour market and the rate of price and cost inflation. Now, the actual relationship between inflation and unemployment is more complex than the Phillips curve suggests. But first proposed in the late 50s by the New Zealand economist A.W. Phillips, and it's been used over the decades by economists to explain the possible relationship between prices and jobs. So uh, here's the short one Phillips curve. Uh, as you would normally draw it. Now, you could it could intersect the x-axis if you wanted to show the economics of deflation, for example. I won't do that in this video, but keep in mind, it could cut the x-axis. So the short one Phillips curve indicates an inverse, non-linear relationship between unemployment and the rate of inflation. So when, when unemployment is high at U1, for example, very high unemployment, perhaps even more than 10% of the labour force, then inflationary pressures in an economy tend, on, on the whole, to be fairly weak. We'd expect low inflation when unemployment is high. And that's shown on the y-axis there. And indeed, it may be the case that when unemployment falls from U1 to U2, for example, uh, it may not cause much of a rise in inflation. You see spare capacity is being used up, and there's lots of uh, excess labour supply, and rising employment actually often means a more efficient use of factory resources. So there's little big risk of a rise in inflation as unemployment falls from U1 to U2. So the Phillips curve is fairly flat at that point, and we say there's a favourable trade-off between jobs and prices. You see, we've got unemployment down from U1 to U2, but we haven't experienced on the negative side uh, a significant spike in inflation. But as unemployment falls further, the yellow dot shows us that, uh, we see a, a reduction in cyclical unemployment, for example, then wage pressures and price pressures in the economy may start to accelerate. Notice here that the gradient of the Phillips curve is starting to steepen. And the trade-off between the two objectives, keeping inflation low and unemployment low, is starting to become a little bit more difficult. So unemployment falls to U3, but price inflation rises to P3. And as unemployment falls to low levels, below U3, the risk of a significant increase in inflation goes up. And at this stage, the output gap is likely to be positive, and factor markets, including the market for things like raw materials, component parts, as well as labour, uh, are becoming uh, experiencing shortages. And the result, as we see here, is a, an increase in wage inflation and other costs, which then leads to or feeds through to a rise in consumer price inflation up to P4. Can you see here, there's an inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation, and the trade-off between the two objectives is worsening. We've managed to achieve a small fall in unemployment at the expense of a significant rise in inflation. So that's your basic short-run Phillips curve idea. At this point, the, the trade-off between jobs and prices has become unfavourable. Uh, and, and when inflation is accelerating, you know, 3 4 5%, indeed above that, we often see a, a nation's central bank for example, the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England starting to tighten policy by raising interest rates to, to cool the inflationary pressure and bring down demand poor inflationary pressures then. So, explaining the basics of the Phillips curve, when, when unemployment is high, inflationary pressures tend to be weak. Often there's a big gap between potential and actual GDP. We call that a negative output gap. High unemployment tilts the balance of wage negotiating power towards employers because there's a big excess supply of labour. And when unemployment is high, the real spending power of households in particular is depressed, leading to a fall in consumption, which is the biggest part of aggregate demand. But when unemployment is low, 
there is upward pressure on wages and prices. Uh, a lot of it is that firms are competing for workers. Uh, they have to uh, raise wages both to retain, to recruit and to retain their workers. As a result, inflation may increase. And falling unemployment and strong growth can lead to shortages of components and other inputs, leading to cost push inflation. So what has happened to unemployment and inflation in the UK in, in recent years? Well, this chart shows, first of all, the rate of unemployment since 2008, and that's a percentage of the labour force out of work. And I've added onto it the rate of inflation using the Consumer Price Index, and that's the, the annual 12-month increase in consumer prices. So on the y-axis there, we're using percentage for both. The, you know, the orange bit, the unemployment, is the percentage of the labour force. Uh, the percentage on the blue is percentage rise in consumer prices. Well, unemployment went up quite sharply uh, in the recession prompted by the global financial uh, crisis. Uh, inflationary pressures were weak, of course, because of the low demand and the weak economy. But then we had a period of time, uh, for example, from 2013 to 2015 and beyond, actually, when we had falling unemployment and falling inflation. Indeed, follow the blue line there, the biggest risk in 2015 was probably deflation rather than inflation. And unemployment's continued to fall from 2016 to 2019 and with low inflation. So there was a favourable trade-off there. We were able to get more people back into work without inflation rising much above or beyond the 2% inflation target. Now, crucially, in 2022, what we've seen is a big rise in inflation, largely caused by external shocks, such as the increase in the price of natural gas and crude oil and food prices in the wake of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And that has driven UK inflation towards 10%. It averaged 9% in 2022, just over, but peaked at 11% in November 2022. So unemployment fell in 2022, Inflation rose sharply. Is that a Phillips curve? Well, it probably isn't. It's because of the external factors causing inflation to be much higher. Now, the big question in 2023 is what's going to happen to both inflation and unemployment? The hope is that inflation will fall maybe back towards 5-6%. Unemployment likely to go up because the economy is on the edge of recession. So rising unemployment, falling inflation, is that a Phillips curve? Well, perhaps... Of course, there are many, many factors at work. The Phillips curve was widely accepted by economists in the 60s and 70s and often was used to justify government policies, fiscal and monetary policy, that aimed to bring down unemployment by stimulating the economy. But the theory came under great scrutiny and criticism in the 1970s, especially in the United States and the UK, where they experienced high inflation and high unemployment at the same time. And this was called stagflation and led in many ways to the monetarist revolution in economics. Uh, monetarism is a theory of inflation led by Milton Friedman, uh, who argued that the short run Phillips curve was not a reliable guide any longer to economic policy making. Something that developed out of it, which you'll need to know for the exam, is the expectations augmented Phillips curve. Now, this Phillips curve is an extension of the traditional curve that considers the impact of expected inflation on actual inflation. And the key idea behind the expectations augmented Phillips curve, or EAPC, is that inflation expectations can influence the behaviour of workers and businesses and therefore affect the trade-off between jobs and prices in the short run. Put, short, uh, put term, shortly or promptly, if people expect inflation to be high, then inflation will be higher for a given rate of unemployment in the labour market. So here's our original Phillips curve. We talked about the, the changing shape of it as un unemployment fell. Well, in the traditional Phillips curve model, the relationship is based solely on the current level of unemployment. But in the expectations augmented curve, then the level of expected inflation is also included as a determinant of the actual rate of inflation. And this is because workers and firms adjust their behaviour in response to expected changes in prices. So I've shifted SRPC, the short run Phillips curve, from one 
to two. Can you see what's happened there? It looks as if there's been an increase in expected inflation. So if people, if workers and firms expect prices to increase in the future, or if they see inflation rising, then they may negotiate for higher wages to compensate for that increase in inflation. People are resistant to real reductions in their pay. We've seen that with the strikes in 2022 and 2023. And if people negotiate higher wages, that would lead to an increase in actual inflation, even if unemployment was low. Let's take unemployment level U3, for example. If people expect higher inflation, wages and costs get bidded up. So inflation gets higher, it goes up to P5 at a given rate of unemployment of U3. So shifts in the Phillips curve caused by changes in inflation expectations can worsen the trade-off between prices and jobs. Now we have unemployment at U3, but with a higher rate of inflation. Now, which policies might cause the Phillips curve to move in a favourable direction, either to move lower or to flatten? Well, basically three main, main kind of policies. Successful use of supply-side policies can improve the trade-off because they aim to improve the productive capacity of the economy. So if we have better core infrastructure, be it telecoms and transport, logistics, power and so on and so forth, if we have better infrastructure, if we have research and development which can achieve process innovations, if we improve our human capital through education and training, these policies, often at a micro level, can increase the potential output of an economy. That brings down the rate of structural unemployment without causing inflation and can flatten the Phillips curve. Labour markets have a key role to play, and partly that's linked, of, linked of course, to supply-side policies. So reforms that, that significantly improve work incentives to get more people into actively looking for and taking work. Uh, perhaps policies which improve the net inflow of skilled workers into the economy from migration. Improve labour mobility, both occupational and geographical. Those, all of these things can increase competition in the labour market and help to bring unemployment down without necessarily causing extra inflation. And thirdly, don't underestimate the power of international trade. If overseas trade can lead to greater contestability in markets and therefore lower prices for different goods and services, that can bring down the inflation rate and flatten the Phillips curve. So there we go. That was a quick look at the economics of the Phillips curve. It's a useful model. It's an interesting idea. And it's an important one to have in your locker when exams come around. Thanks for joining in. Stay happy. Stay curious. And see you sometime soon.